Okay, it's running now. All right, I just wanted to tell you guys how these nine bolts work. What you have is a spider gear and a friction cone. And they go together and they're spawned onto the axle shaft. This right here is your spider gear assembly and it sits just like so. Just like so in there. And this sits just like that. This portion fits right over the top. Just wanted to tell you guys how this thing works really quick and what it is that people machine when they fix these. There's a few different ways to do this. The problem is, as you can see, these are conical. This is also conical. You have this surface right here for this surface rubs. It's a clutch. It sits just like that and the spline to the axle shaft and this is also spline to the axle shaft so for in order for this gear to turn independently it has to overcome the friction of that clutch what happens is these windows right here you can get a good angle of that they show you how much space you have before your cones bottom out the cones will wear out over time as they wear they get slightly smaller and the way this is designed is as they get smaller they just sink down into the carrier this surface right here I've recently had machined and this surface as well the replacement cones you can buy are just flat this part here is just flat there's none of this so if you want to use those you need to machine this ridge right here all the way down but there's no problem you can do that not a big deal uh, what I've had done is I've had this surface right here machined down 40 thousandths just because it seemed like a nice number it's around a millimeter and I've also had this machine down what happens is as these things wear out and they wear together this surface right here will start rubbing into this surface and can cause damage same with this surface right here will rub into this surface around the edge of this area it'll rub in there and it'll, it'll eat away all the metal so if you can catch these things before they start rubbing like that these are very close to bottoming out before I machined them but they do not actually bottom out that's why there's no damage but you'll see these huge grooves right here and you'll see huge grooves in there and that can actually trash the carrier and the cones if you catch them before that you can easily machine these back and they're good to go um, after you machine them, there's less friction surface because you machine a little bit of this area out. So there's less friction surface. Uh, so they will wear out slightly faster. But that's one of those prices you just have to pay. One of the reasons that uh, you do this on these particular differentials and not, for example, the 10 bolts that are normally factory and 82 to 9, uh, 2002 actually Camaros, is this gear right here is a separate piece. And the Auburn posies that are very common, this is all integrated and cast as one big piece. So if you were to machine this down and it sits down farther in the carrier, this gear right here gets farther away from these spider gears. What happens is the backlash between these gears opens up enough that if you put a lot of load on them, they'll begin to get damaged. Eventually they're going to break. That's why you can't rebuild those, but you can rebuild these. Uh, these are the spider gears. When you take these out, make sure you look at these. Make sure they're all in good shape, no damaged teeth. These are all really good. I didn't have an issue with these. These right here are your preload springs. They go right in the center. And they ride on these two plates. There's two plates right here. There's three springs. They're supposed to be replaced any time you have this thing apart but this is uh, 2015 and I have no idea where you get these anymore I imagine there was a time in the 80s when these were available uh, that time is long gone uh, not a big deal to reuse them as long as they're not broken these sit just like so and let's come around right here look at this axle I'm gonna pull these spider gears out here we have an axle this is another important thing, whenever you're rebuilding these, 
you make sure you have to rebuild it when you put it back together reassemble it do it on the axle shaft because these gears and the cones are separate pieces and if they don't line up you're never going to get these axles back into it you're going to take the whole thing back out of the car and do it all over again just to turn this thing a little bit if these splines don't line up there's nothing you can do this preload plate sits right here and these springs sit like that And that's your preload plate. And this sits up here. This sits like so. Obviously these aren't gonna be snug because I don't have it tightened together. And then your cone is like that. With this piece over the top. It's really not that complicated once you have it apart. Just make sure you keep everything together and straight. Come back. As I said, the reason you can rebuild these is because you can shim this gear away from the cone to maintain the backlash on the internal spider gears. These are the shims right here. Uh, these are just pinion shims for a pinion gear on a factory GM 82 to 2002 10 bolt posi. They fit just fine. Any shim will work, anything that fits. But these are easily available off the shelf. And just go in just like so. You space your gear back out and your backlash, your spider gears is back in spec, hopefully. There are a few different theories about how to do this, how, much, how many shims you need. Uh, these never bottomed out, so I'm not going to put a bunch in here. But if you have your cone bottomed out and you want to rebuild it, one school of thought is there is a uh, PDF file on the internet if you look for it that gives you measurements and how many shims you're supposed to do for a certain amount of machining and wear or something like that. Um, another one says just shim it as tight as you can. There's not really an official spec for this. If you shim it as tight as you can, you'll get much better posi action. If you shim it loose, it will probably not wear out quite as quick. There's nothing. There's nothing really official on this just kind of eyeball it. These are pretty close to in spec as it is. They're just about to bottom out, but they weren't quite there. So I'm just gonna add about 10 thousandths to each side and just call it good. Uh, I may add 15 thousandths. I'm not really sure. In the end, it's not really gonna matter that much. Shim it tighter if you want better posi action. For me, I'm auto crossing, I'm not drag racing. So I'll take a little bit less lock up in exchange for a little bit longer life. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to shim it as tight as I absolutely can. I'm just going to put some in there to try to bring it closer to the stack. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys and you guys have a good idea of how these things come apart and go together. Uh, nothing to it. If you have any questions, just ask. Good luck.